I'm going to talk about hypoperfusion, which is commonly referred to as shock. Perfusion is the supply of oxygen and also the removal of waste from the body's cells and tissues. Hypoperfusion refers to inadequate perfusion. So the inadequate supply of oxygen to the cells and tissues and the inadequate removal of waste from those cells and tissues. That is hypoperfusion. Certain cells and tissues are more sensitive to hypoperfusion than others, including the ones of the brain, the spinal cord, and also the kidneys. These are most sensitive to hypoperfusion. If you have a patient that is in shock, you may notice some changes, including altered mental status. For example, the patient may have anxiety or be combative. And this is due to the brain not getting enough oxygen. The patient may have pale, cool, or clammy skin. Um, this is due to the body diverting blood from non-vital areas like the skin to vital organs like the brain and the heart. So it redirects the blood to more important areas. And this is the same reason is also what causes nausea and vomiting because blood is diverted from the digestive system. You may also notice vital sign changes and it depends on what stage of shock the patient is in. But some vital sign changes include pulse increases, the pulse may become weak and tready, respirations may increase and become shallow and labored, or blood pressure may narrow, which is a very dangerous late sign. I'm going to go over different stages of shock. I'm going to start with compensated shock, which occurs when the body senses a decrease in perfusion and attempts to compensate for it. You see early signs, including increased heart rate. This is the body's attempt to increase blood flow. Increased respiration, the body's attempt to increase oxygen in the blood. And you may see pale, cool skin with a longer cap refill time. And this again is due to the constriction of the peripheral circulation to redirect blood to vital organs. So these are all early signs of shock. Decompensated shock begins at the point when the body can no longer compensate for the low blood volume or lack of perfusion, whatever is causing the shock. And you see late signs, including a drop in blood pressure. The patient may be thirsty. They may say they're thirsty. The patient may have dilated pupils. Or the patient may have cyanosis, particularly around the lips and nail beds. So these are all late signs of shock. Irreversible shock occurs when the body lost the battle to maintain perfusion to its organs and cell damage occurs, especially in the liver and kidneys. So that's irreversible shock. Three different stages of shock and the body responds differently in each stage. We go over different types of shock, starting with hypovolemic shock, which results from blood or fluid loss, 
If it's caused by bleeding, it's called hemorrhagic shock. And it also may ca be caused by burns, crush injuries, severe dehydration, um, or bleeding, like I mentioned. So say this is your blood vessel. It's a normal size blood vessel, and it's filled up almost to capacity with blood. The blood's flowing through your blood vessel, and there's good pressure there. Your blood vessel dilates, but you still have the same amount of blood, or even less blood, say you're bleeding, to fill its capacity. Now, this leads to hypovolemic shock. So hypo, below, volemic, the volume, shock. So you, have, you don't have enough volume. So the capacity is too great to be filled by the available blood that you have. Cardiogenic shock results from inadequate pumping of blood by the heart. So for example, the strength of the heart's contraction may decrease from damage. Um, the heart's electrical system may malfunction. And you're going to want to watch for low blood pressure, edema in the feet and ankles, or any other signs of heart failure, which can cue you into a possibility for cardiogenic shock. Neurogenic shock recall results from uncontrolled vasodilation, again, uncontrolled dilation of the blood vessels. And this can be caused by nerve paralysis, for example, from spinal cord injuries, sepsis, or anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction. The signs of neurogenic shock, which is rarely seen in the field, are different than the other types of shock. So the patient may have warm, flushed and dry skin as opposed to the pale, cool, and clammy skin that you would see in other types of shock. Now I'm going to briefly talk about patient care and of course you're going to take your standard precautions and that may include manual head and neck stabilization. You want to maintain the patient's airway and administer high concentration oxygen via non-rebreather and prevent loss of heat from the body. So cover the patient with a blanket. And if it's in your local protocol, you may use a PASG. The two most important patient care steps in shock are going to be high concentration oxygen and prevent of further heat loss.